Our journey of slightly over a hundred years started in 1906, when the Kuala Lumpur Rubber Company Limited, or KLR, was incorporated in London. Its purpose was to invest in rubber plantations in the Far East British colony of Malaya since the introduction of the motor car, equipped with pneumatic tyres made from natural rubber, had sparked a boom in rubber prices at the time. The company had acquired some 640 hectares of rubber estates around the vicinity of Kuala Lumpur, hence its name Kuala Lumpur Rubber Company Limited. Kuala Lumpur then was no more than a small settlement along the Sungai Gombak with its main activity in tin mining. Kuala Lumpur has since evolved into the vibrant capital city of Malaysia with high-rise landmarks such as the Petronas Twin Towers. The original estates of KLR around Kuala Lumpur had given way to urban developments like Bangsa, Damansara, Taman Tun Dr. Ismail, Kapong, and Bandau Tama, while part of its Sedgley estate forms the Malaysian government centre of Putrajaya. From its initial 640 hectares, the original company grew by acquisition, and in 1960, it was renamed Kuala Lumpur Kapong Amalgamated Limited, or KLKA, after merging with Kapong Rubber Estates Limited and several other companies. However, much of the development of KLK as a Malaysian company was due to the astuteness and foresight of one man, the late Tan Sri Dato Sri Lee Loy Seng. Tan Sri Lee, a tin miner turned rubber planter, saw the potential of rubber as a renewable source compared to the depleting tin. Along with some close associates, he began acquiring small holdings in several foreign-controlled UK plantation companies during the 1960s and early 1970s. When the May 13, 1969 riots happened, the confidence of foreign investors in Malaysia was severely affected. They began to sell off their Malaysian shares, including KLKA shares. With strong confidence in the country's future, Tansiri Lee decided to buy up a major stake in KLKA and later gained control of the company. In 1973, Tansiri Lee set the precedence of transferring the domicile and all the assets of KLKA, a UK company, to a new Malaysian incorporated company, Kuala Lumpur Kapong Berhad or KLK. This trend was emulated by other plantation companies in later years. In 1976, KLK acquired equity in another UK company, Yulcato and Company Limited, now known as Synthema, one of the world's leading suppliers of specialty chemicals. Currently, KLK is the single largest shareholder with a 26% stake in Synthema. Although dubbed a rubber baron, Tansiri Lee was pragmatic enough to diversify into oil palm. KLK was also the first West Malaysian plantation group to venture into Sabah in 1984, acquiring 12,000 hectares of the Hapseng plantations, which were initially planted with cocoa and oil palm. Tansiri Lee was keen to develop Malaysian local management to learn and take over from the then expatriate plantation managers. He then formed Tycho Plantations as a local plantation agency house and later merged the management of both Tycho Plantations and KLK under one roof. Foremost a planter, he spent a great deal of time visiting the estates and operating centres to motivate his employees and to inculcate in them the culture of loyalty, hard work and integrity. Following his demise in 1993, Tansiri Lee was succeeded by our current Chief Executive Officer, Tansiri Dato Siri Lee Oi Hian. Over the years, KLK's visionary leadership has set its focus on strategic expansions, and today, our total planted area has increased substantially to 300,000 hectares. Plantation remains as KLK Group's core business, with oil palm as its main plantation crop, with its land bank extending across Malaysia, Indonesia, and Liberia. KLK ventured into resource-based manufacturing in the 1990s to optimize value across the supply chain, 
by vertically integrating its upstream business with downstream capabilities in oleochemicals, derivatives and specialty chemicals. Today, KLK Oleo is a global oleochemical producer with complexes located strategically in Malaysia, Indonesia, China and Europe. Property development too became another key business as the group capitalized on its strategic land bank location in Peninsula Malaysia. KLK made its first foray into property development in 1990 and today KLK land is focused on Banda Seri Coal Fields, a 1001 acre township in Sungai Buloh, Malaysia. KLK also ventured into farming through Irregular Springs Limited or ESL in Western Australia. Over the years, the business continued to evolve and in 1991, KLK Farms Private Limited was born. The farming business continued to grow in the Wheat Belt region of Western Australia. From Northampton and Minganew in the north to Williams and Arthur River in the south, spanning a total of 45,000 hectares of arable land, with 85% of the land dedicated to wheat, canola and other crops. Sustainability has been embedded in KLK's operations since 1999. As one of the pioneer members of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, or RSPO, KLK developed a comprehensive sustainability policy in 2014. The policy adopts the principles and criteria of RSPO, which serves as the cornerstone of the group's sustainability practices. The crux of the policy relates to the group's commitment towards no deforestation, no new peat, and no exploitation, or NDPE. The sound stewardship and solid foundation laid by the late Tun Sri Dato Sri Lee Loi Singh has been nurtured, strengthened and propelled onto the global stage by the next generation of the Lee family. Counseled by an experienced board of directors, KLK Today has earned the acknowledgement as a blue chip company with a reputation for sturdy management and strong earnings.